In today's lesson, we're going to cover the Pythagorean Theorem. Now, you probably already have the Pythagorean Theorem memorized as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But if that's all you have memorized, you've actually lost half of the Pythagorean Theorem. A theorem is going to be an if-then statement. The if part is just as important as the then part. If triangle ABC is a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The second question we need to answer is, how do we go from capital A to lowercase a? Well, if we look at our picture, capital A is a point, capital B is a point, and capital C is a point. And we have to have a right triangle, so let's make our C vertex the right angle. So to go from capital A to lowercase a, we're going to actually go across the triangle. And the side opposite of angle A is going to be lowercase a. And the side opposite of angle B is going to be lowercase b. And the side opposite the vertex C is going to be lowercase c. Notice that in this case, C is our hypotenuse. And A and B are the two legs of the right triangle. So the Pythagorean theorem has to have a right triangle, and we have leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Let's apply this theorem. In example one, our missing side is the hypotenuse. It's the side opposite the right angle. So I'm going to call that missing side x. To solve for x, I'm going to plug x in for c, and I'm going to plug 8 and 6 in for a and b. It actually doesn't make a difference what order my legs go in. The only thing I need to worry about is that my hypotenuse is c. Now I just need to solve for x. 8 squared is 64, 6 squared is 36. 64 and 36 is 100. And if I'm solving for x, I need to undo x squared. I need to undo this squared. To undo a square, I'm going to square root. And if I square root the right side, I have to square root the left side. So when I simplify, the square root of 100 is 10, and the square root of x squared is x. These two operations undo each other. So I'm left with x equals 10. So the sides of this triangle are 6, 8, and 10. Notice a couple things. 6, 8, and 10 are all three integers. And if I plug 6, 8, and 10 into the Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to get a true statement. When all three values in a right triangle, all three side lengths, are integer answers, we form a Pythagorean triple. A Pythagorean triple, all three numbers have to be integers. And it has to make a squared plus b squared equaling c squared true. Let's look at example two. We know the hypotenuse in this case. So our missing side is actually a leg. And it doesn't make a difference which value we put in for a and b as long as our c value is correct. Now I'm going to solve for x. To solve for x, I need to s subtract 64. 144 minus 64 is 80. So I have x squared equals 80. 
and to solve for x, I need to take the square root of both sides of my equal sign. The square root of x squared gives me x, and I'm left with the square root of 80. Now if I try to take the square root of 80, I don't end up with an integer. So my final answer, I'm going to have to simplify. So if I have the square root of 80, I need to find the biggest perfect square that divides 80. The biggest perfect square that divides 80 is 16, and 80 can be re rewritten as 16 times 5. And when I have multiplication underneath the square root, I can distribute to each term, keeping multiplication in between. So I'm left with x equaling 4 square roots of 5. If you look, 4 square roots of 5 is not an integer. So 8, 4 square roots of 5, and 12 does not make a Pythagorean triple. In this case, I can still get an answer, it's just not a Pythagorean triple. 4 square roots of 5 is known as the exact answer. It's exact because I haven't rounded anything and I've simplified down as far as I can go. The exact answer is written in simplified radical form. Now I can come up with an approximate answer. If I take my calculator and I find the approximate value of 4 square roots of 5, it's approximately 8.9. So when I round to 8.9, I'm not going to use an equal sign, I'm going to use an approximate sign. 4 square roots of 5 is approximately 8.9. It's not exactly 8.9, I've rounded. My approximate answer is my rounded answer. In this class, you're going to be required to be able to get both the exact answer and the approximate answer. So know how to simplify radicals and know how to use your calculator to round to get that approximate answer. Last example. This triangle is not drawn to scale. If you look at the right angle, it isn't a right angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this triangle so that it is a right triangle. And then I'm going to relabel the sides. My hypotenuse is 3 square roots of 2. One of my legs is 2. And my other leg is my unknown x. So I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find this missing side. 2 squared plus x squared equals 3 square roots of 2 squared. And when I take 3 square roots of 2 squared, I need to make sure that I put 3 square roots of 2 in parentheses. I want to make sure that this 2 has enough power to square everything. So let's simplify. 2 squared is 4, and 3 square roots of 2 squared. Well, there's multiplication in between here, and I can distribute exponents over multiplication. So I'm going to drop my multiplication straight down and I'm going to distribute so I have 3 squared times the square root of 2 squared. And when I do that math, 3 squared is 9. The square root of 2 squared is actually 2. So I have 4 plus x squared equals 18. Subtract 4, subtract 4, x squared equals 14. Take the square root. I'm left with 
x equals the square root of 14. Now I need to simplify the square root of 14. And when I look at 14, the only numbers that divide 14 are 2 and 7. Neither 2 nor 7 is a perfect square, so I actually can't simplify this down anymore. The square root of 14 is my exact answer. I can also find my approximate answer by using my calculator. The square root of 14 is approximately 3.7 if I round to one decimal place.